line that up against that stick. Oh, and that's pretty accurate. So that is the first shadow, last shadow technique for field expedient direction finding when you don't have a compass. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Bird of Green Beret. Just wanted to take a minute and welcome you back to the series. Hope you're enjoying it. If you want to get a copy of all the gear that I use throughout this series, you can get a free downloadable packing list. I'll put that link in the description below. Also, if you're enjoying this series and you want to get the full film commercial free and all together, not broken up over the next several weeks, you can purchase the film still from my website. You can stream it. You can get it on your very own USB thumb drive, which is pretty handy, replaces the download or you can get it on a three disc DVD set. Highly recommend you add those so that you can get the full experience of watching everything together. If you like this series, you like the film, I'd encourage you to get my book. Everything that you see me do in the Into the Woods series and a heck of a lot more is all packed inside this book. And you can get this from my website, you can get it on Amazon. I'll put all the links in the description below. Click those get the film, get the book, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Into the Woods. Many people are familiar with the technique called the shadow stick method or the shadow tip method for field expedient direction finding. And what you do for that is you place a tall stick into the ground that remains stationary and that's gonna cast a shadow that opposes the sun. And then at the very tip of that shadow, you're going to place a mark. Then you're going to wait 15 to 20 minutes and the shadow is going to move as the sun appears to arc across the sky and then you're going to mark that next tip. And what you'll create is a series of marks that you can then take a stick, place those on there and you can kind of infer your north-south line with that. So that takes anywhere from, and obviously the more sticks and more measurements you make, the better uh, and more accurate it's going to be. But you're still limited in the amount of data, the amount of input you're collecting from the sun. So I'm going to show you a technique that I think is much better. Um, and this is kind of one of those stationary techniques and it's a little more passive once you set it up so that you can go do other things and focus on other things. So setting up your fire, setting up your shelter, getting some clean water to drink and that sort of thing. So what we've done is kind of taken that principle and combined it with the watch method a little more. So still the same stick placed in the ground and this technique is called first shadow last shadow you could also do it last shadow first shadow like we did in this case so same stick in the ground and basically the last shadow of the evening before the sun drops below the horizon and no longer casts a shadow you're going to place a stick along the shadow that that line is casting then in the morning when you wake up the very first shadow that you get casted, you're going to mark that shadow with the same size stick. Right? It's very important that this remains stationary and constant and that the two sticks that you mark the shadow with are both a constant because if they're different lengths then you've given a variable in there that shouldn't be there. Uh, the length of the actual shadow that's cast doesn't matter. The length of the sticks that you're using to measure that shadow are what matters. So what you've done is you've captured the first shadow and the last shadow and everything in between can be inferred from those two shadows. So when you have your two marks on the ground, you simply have to take another straight stick and tip to tip, because these are exact same length. That will give you your east-west line and that includes the entire photo period for the day. You know, even if you did it first shadow, last shadow, or last shadow, first shadow, it's still the maximum amount. You basically got the very first reading that you could ever get and the very last reading that you could ever get. But you did it a little more passively while you're doing other things. So if that is your east-west line, just take another stick and put that at a 90 degree right here. And this line is now pointing north. And of course, if you have a compass, you could just use that. But this is just for training purposes. There we go. Line that up against that stick. Oh, and that's pretty accurate. So that is the first shadow, last shadow technique 
for field expedient direction finding when you don't have a compass. Another technique that you can use that's not really for a base camp type scenario, but it's more for a getting your direction on the move really quickly is called the horizon line adjustment method. And it's really fast. Uh, it kind of combines some of those same principles where you're using the shadow for direction finding. So I'm in the northern hemisphere, so I know that the sun appears to arc across the southern portion of the sky for us. We also know that it rises in the east and it sets in the west and it's going to cast a shadow opposite of those two directions. And I also know that the entire photo period for the day is going to be basically 180 degrees of that full 360 degree circle around the globe. We're only seeing 180 degrees of that. So, and it's roughly 12 out of the 24 hours it's going to be visible as far as the sun. So if I do the math on that, it comes out to be about 15 degrees. So that tells me that every hour the sun moves about 15 degrees across the sky. So with that information, what I can do is from the horizon line to where the sun is now, and I know that it's morning also, so I know which direction it's coming up. With it coming up from the horizon, I can take my hand and extend it completely out. All right, it doesn't work if you change the field of view and bring your hand close. You have to extend it completely out, put the bottom edge of my thumb on the horizon line, and now the top edge of my pinky, the back side of my hand, is actually the next reference point. So that's one hour. This is two hours. This is three hours to the bottom of the sun. So that tells me that we're three hours past sunset. And if it moves every if it moves 15 degrees every hour, then it tells me that the sun has moved 45 degrees from the horizon. So I can take that information and line myself up and become the shadow stick with the sun. Then I can look down at my shadow on the ground and orient my body to where I'm basically perpendicular to that. So the sun is coming directly down this arm through my body and I'm in line. With my feet together pointing straight, that becomes my reference point. Now, back to the 15 degrees per hour. This would be 90 degrees, this 90 degree angle here. And of course, 180 degrees would be behind me. If it's moved 45 degrees, then I need to account for that by just moving my feet 45 degrees, right? If this is 90, this is 45. Now, if I bring my feet back together, I should be facing north or pretty close to that. So what I can do to check that, and of course, this isn't something you would do in the field. You're not gonna be able to check it with a compass. You know, but I'm gonna show you how accurate this technique is place a stick in between my feet in line with what I think north is and then we'll check it real quick with a compass and see how close we are. Let's put it right on here. That's not very flat. Here we go. So that is within about two degrees of north. So that's plenty close enough to get me where I'm going. And so of course you wouldn't have a compass to check. If you had a compass, you would just use that. But this is for when you don't have a compass. So I wanted to show you just how accurate it is by using this compass just for teaching purposes, training purposes. If I place this stick north, then I know that east is 90 degrees to the right of that. So this would be facing east. So if I wanna travel east, then I can reference north. And then from that, I can infer what east is and I can travel that direction check myself again when I get a little further down the trail. Obviously, facing north, west would be 90 degrees to the left, and I can move out that direction. If I needed to go south, then all I have to do is turn completely around, and now I'm facing south. I can pick up my stick, and I can keep moving and continue to adjust myself, remembering to measure the angle of the sun in relation to the horizon. So that is the horizon line adjustment method. That's a quick way for field expedient direction finding that you can do on the move. I don't know if we were done, but that was. Which one, that one? What's that? This one? Or just, or just in general? Another? Huh? Don't look at me.